much for coming. Um, oh, gee, that's a bit loud. Uh, we've got a small crowd tonight, so we'll have an informal, informal forum. And if you want to ask questions and throw things at me, be feel feel free. Um, there's a few people here who have been to my lectures before, um, and I know some people have heard me on radio shows. So, uh, so some of the first half of this lecture will be a little bit of like like a revision of what you already know, but I'm going to move into some new stuff tonight and uh, we're going to be discussing the spiritual aspects of reverse speeds, which is something I don't do in my public lectures very often and uh, something I've been quite reluctant to do, in point of fact, so well, we're going to venture into the unknown tonight. So who knows what I could say. All right, my life changed uh, quite, um, quite dramatically 35 years ago. I had a... Uh, a synchronistic accidental event happened to me. I had a tape player strapped to my belt and I was getting ready to go out for the evening and uh, I was dancing around my bathroom and the uh, tape player fell out of the belt straight into a toilet bowl. And I pulled the thing out and it didn't work. I pulled it apart, tried to fix it up and when I wired it back together again, it only played backwards. So I had this uh, useless backwards playing Walkman. And about six months later, I was back in Australia and um, I was running a halfway house for street kids. And uh, there was an evangelist traveling through the United States, traveling through Australia, preaching that rock and roll is the devil's music. And if you take uh, rock and roll records and run it backwards, you can hear these hidden satanic messages. And some of my kids came to the office and they gave me a tape of the evangelists. I listened to the sermon. I thought, oh, this is all very interesting. So uh, I thought, well, look, I've got this little backwards playing Walkman at home that I can experiment with this for myself. And um, so I started looking at some music, and I'm going to play you a couple of uh, simple music examples. Uh, this was uh, back in 84. And so uh, here's an example from Credence Clearwater Re Revival. It was down in Louisiana, just about a mile from Texarkana, in their And you run this in reverse and he sings backwards, I believe in my cool woman. So I'm saying, well this is all very interesting, how on earth did this get here, okay? Yeah, let's run the whole lot backwards and you'll hear the gibberish and then this phrase just comes out of the gibberish. So there's a whole lot backwards. Uh, here's uh, one from Marilyn Munro in 1958, I think. The song is called Defile My Claim. She's, she's talking about meeting her perfect man. He's worth a fancy fortune, but it's not in cash. I'm going to find my claim. She sings, he'll come out full of magic. And again. So I spent quite a few months running uh, my musical collection backwards and uh, getting friends over to listen to what I was finding and I became uh, quite obsessed with this whole thing. Um, one thing became very apparent to me from day one that I started looking at this was the fundamentalist claim that this was all satanic, that they were all satanic messages. But I was finding messages across the spectrum about love and politics and uh, uh, God and um, they weren't all satanic messages at all. Um, here's a modern one, this is from Miley Cyrus, Wrecking Ball. We claw, we chained our hearts in vain, we jumped, never asking why. This one says, this girl horny, she loves you. This girl horny, she loves you. You got that there? This girl horny, she loves you. Typical Miley Cyrus. Anyway, so we're not going to... We're not going to go heavy into music, that's just three examples and this is how I started my uh, research uh, looking, at, looking at music. Then um, a few months later I accidentally stumbled across this phenomenon in normal human speech and I'm going to play you an example of the uh, very first uh, 
verse I'll ever heard in human speech. And uh, once I started finding in speech, it really put a whole new uh, uh, twist on the whole thing. And uh, this is the very first example I found on speech. This is uh, Neil Armstrong as he's walking on the moon. So here's his forward statement. At one small step for man, Back as he says, man will spacewalk. Did you all hear that there? Well, it's quite stunned to hear that in a speech. One thing to hear it in music, but suddenly to uh, hear it in human speech is a whole different thing altogether. And uh, I started running examples of speech backwards. I'm going to play you some simple examples of speech. Here's uh, Angelina Jolie. I grew up very, uh, very aware of my emotions. So she says, I grew up very aware of my own emotions. Listen very carefully to what she's saying backwards. Here we go. I'm very aware. I'm very aware. What do you hear? I'm very aware. I'm very aware. Okay, so we call this a congruent. Reversal. So here's the forwards again. I grew up and I'm very, uh, very aware of my emotions. And backwards, I'm very aware. I'm very aware. I'm very aware. I'm very aware. And if we run the whole lot backwards, you'll he hear it amongst the gibberish. So I'm very aware. Oh, yeah. You hear that just jumps out of the gibberish there. I'll do it again. So I'm very aware. Oh, yeah. And this is if you take speech and run it backwards. About once every 15 or 20 seconds, you're going to hear these very clear phrases like this jumping up out of the gibberish. They're quite clear, they're quite apparent. Um, um, usually they're fairly clear. And here's another one. This is a Newt Gingrich talking about an immigration bill. It's an amazingly badly written bill. It's an amazingly badly written bill. And backwards, listen carefully, what's he saying here? The real bad bill. A real bad bill. What do you hear? It's an amazingly badly written bill. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean, didn't mean to do that. Anyway, if you missed it, it says the real bad bill, which is uh, what he's saying forwards. So uh, <laughs> here is the, uh, here is the uh, forwards again. It's an amazingly badly written bill. And backwards. A real bad bill. A real bad bill. A real bad bill. Okay. So I became quite obsessed with this backwards playing stuff. And, um, and I uh, started um, spending all my time uh, running tapes backwards. Uh, taping the TV and politicians and friends who came over to my house and myself. And, uh, and I was uh, stunned to find these backward messages everywhere, prolific throughout human, human speech. Uh, then in 1987 I wrote my theory of reverse speech. And the theory basically states that the process of spoken communication is twofold. As the human brain is constructing the sounds of speech, it's putting those sounds together in such a way that we're saying two messages at once. One is forward from the conscious mind, and the other one is in reverse from the unconscious mind. So the theory I proposed was a dual-fold form of human communication. One conscious and the other unconscious. Now we're going to be talking about, uh, and so I spent, I, I spent the last 20 or 30 years trying to get this dual form of human communication accepted. Um, I haven't gone so much into what is speaking backwards and what its implications are, and that's what we're going to do tonight. But I'm going to cover some basics here and play you a few more simple examples. This is an example of Bob Dole. Um, Senator Bob Dole resigning from the Senate to run against Bill Clinton. You do not lay claim to the office you hold. It lays claim to you. Your obligation is to bring to it the gifts you can of labor and honesty, and then to depart with grace. And backwards, listen very carefully, what's he saying? It's an honor. It's an honor. What do you hear? It's an honor. It's an honor. I'll play it again for those who missed it. It's an honour. It's an honour. Notice how very positive all these reversals are so far. I'm deliberately picking positive ones. The first speech gets a fairly bad rap, rap out there. It's all those evil satanic messages and it's here to uh, find all the, uh, all the evil dark things inside of you. But it's actually very positive. A lot of the things it tells us about human nature is very 
positive. All right, here's a negative one. I lied. All right, this is, uh, this is Hillary Clinton uh, running for office. And you know what? It also matters when he makes fun of people with disabilities. Calls women pigs. Back what she says, and I'll scam you. And I'll scam you. And I'll scam you. Okay. And I'll scam you. Now I'm going to run the whole lot backwards. Listen to how it jumps up out of the gibberish. Scam you, Miss Law. See the letter said there will be. And I'll scam you, Mr. Lamb. I'm sorry. You hear that? Just jumps up out of the gibberish there. I'll do that again. See the letter said there will be. And I'll scam you, Mr. Lamb. I'm sorry. And that's literally how this occurs. You run speech backwards and you get the every now and then these very clear phrases just jump up out of the gibberish. Very clear, very obvious, very precise. They are revealing in many cases, well in some cases, sorry, not many cases, in some cases the actual thoughts that you are aware of having at the time of speaking. Like there's some reversals I find on clients that say, yeah, I was thinking that while I was, while I was, while I was speaking. Um, often, though, it comes from a source outside of our conscious awareness and details real thoughts and real emotions which uh, we sometimes uh, don't have connection with. Um, uh, let me play something that reveals... Um, uh, all right, OK, look, here's a funny one. OK, this is, a, this is obviously not what he was thinking at the time. But this is a guy I was going to do business with, OK? So we're having a business dis discussion. Well, we'll negotiate that and make a point when we go over that. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you. I agree. That way, we contain sole rights to the books. Yeah. They're challenged to us. Now, are they point where they're going to be publishing this book? They have options on my next book. Okay, this is an insight into his real self. I'm sure he wasn't thinking, but his spiritual self it comes out and said, t tells us, I'm so full of shit. I <laughs> obviously, uh, obviously not someone you want to do business with. And uh, here's the whole lot played backwards. You hear how that just jumps up out of the gibberish there? You run it backwards and there it is. It's like a neon light. I'm so full of shit. His real self. And here we have another congruent verse. This is Donald Trump talking about Hillary Clinton's emails. Uh, when he gave up that email thing, he, he said, here, Hillary. And you know what? That was orchestrated by the Democratic Party. Okay. This is a wonderful example of what we call the principle of complementarity. It's one of the first things I noticed when I uh, really got heavy into researching diverse speech was the forwards and the reverse nearly always relate to each other. There's this direct contextual relationship. Um, if, this, if these were just purely random phrases, then one would not expect to find this connection between the forwards and the backwards. Now, back forwards, he says, Hillary and email. Okay, they're the two, free, two key phrases. And backwards, he says, Hillary, let's see this email. Here we go. That's backwards. So he's confirming... He's confirming what he's saying forwards. Here's the forwards. Uh, when he gave up that email thing, he, he said, here, Hillary. And you know what? That was orchestrated by the Democratic Party. And Hillary, let's see that email. This Hillary, email. Hillary. This email, sorry. Hillary. So, contextually, exactly the same. Hillary, an email forwards, and Hillary, an email backwards. And let's run the whole lot backwards. Here we go. You know, yeah, that just jumps up out of the gibberish there, Hillary. Let's see this email. And so this is this is what I call reverse speech. It's another form of human communication. It's a natural function of the human mind. As all of us are speaking. We're creating the sounds of our speech in such a way that we're saying two things, one forward from the conscious mind and the other one in reverse from the unconscious mind. Okay, all right, let's, uh, let's move down this a little bit. Um, 
Oh, here's, uh, here's a funny one on George Bush. He's talking about uh, looking forward to working with the Congress. We're trying to get all this done. We look forward to working with the members of Congress to get it done. I'll answer a couple of questions other than the form the AAP. And back as he says, choke the fuckers now. So we call that an incongruent reversal. He says forwards, I look forward to working with the Congress, but backwards, choke the fuckers now. <coughs> so it's an incongruent reversal. All right, let's um, play you. Um, this is an example of reversals that occur in conversation before the topic is discussed forwards. This is an Australian Aboriginal. And he's talking about how at the age of 35 he, uh, he was taken from his family and he discovered he had a whole extended family. So here's the forwards. I was about 35 and I found out that my father was alive. How did you find out? I found out when I found out that my father was alive. Where he says it was just through word of mouth, this is what he says backwards, listen carefully. I am an older sister. I am an older sister. You hear what he's saying there? I have an older sister. For those of you who missed it, I'll play it again. I have an older sister. 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 And then we keep on playing, and this is what he says next. Open a different one. <coughs> so, uh, I mean, what, what something was said to you, was it? Yeah, I just talked to different ones about it because I was sort of trying to trace the sister. One of my sisters. So you found out that you had sisters and brothers? Yeah, I knew all along I had one sister. So he says it backwards and then he says it forwards. Now you've noticed I've played you several reversals already without telling you what they are and you'll be able to hear them fairly easy from the response I'm getting from the audience. Well, um, the re one of the reasons I do that, one of the criticisms that's thrown at reverse speech is, oh, this is like seeing pictures in ink blocks. We're only seeing this because, because you're telling us to see it, okay? And um, that's just simply not the case. Uh, reverses can be heard independently without uh, prompting. Um, several times we'll go and do the same tape and they come back with a proportion of uh, similar reversals. Um, for example, I recently did the, uh, one of my analysts and myself recently did the State of the Union independently. And uh, we came up with, uh, we found about 25 reversals each, and we came up with 10 reversals that were exactly the same. How can you find reversals that are exactly the same if this is just a projection into gibberish? For example, here's one from the State of the Union that we both found in common. You are powerful witnesses to a menace that threatens our world, and your strength truly inspires us all. Thank you very much. He's talking about the American military, and back as he says, America forces are up. Forces are up. America forces are up. America forces are out. So we are. America forces are up. We're out in the world. You know, I mean, America's uh, doing more militarily now than they've done for a long time. But that was that was a reversal that we found in common. Um, and there was many other reversals that we found in common too. Yeah, here we uh, here we have uh, a man. Uh, this is uh, just a casual thought. Uh, this is just one of many many lifetimes where we are here to develop a soul, basically. Um, and when that is achieved, the soul will ascend. OK, listen carefully. What's he saying here? Here we go. I love you today. I love you today. I love you today. What do you hear? I love each day. Yeah, a couple of you got it. I love each day. Here it is again. I love you today. I love you today. And let's run the whole lot backwards. And it jumps up out the gibberish, and this is what he talks about next. See things in a different way to the normal person, sort of thing. Uh, to look at life differently and try to enjoy each day. No, so look at life differently and try to enjoy each day, which is. Uh, continuation of what he had to say in reverse. I love each day. Okay. All right.
So, reverse speech is coming from many different layers of the psyche. It's coming from the conscious mind. If we're lying forth, we can get the truth in reverse. It's only a very small aspect of reverse speech. It's coming from the deep unconscious mind. We're going to get onto that as this lecture continues. Um, and it also begins backwards before it does forwards. Children are first speaking in reverse before they speak backwards. And I'm going to play you a couple of lovely examples of reversals on children. Here we have a four-month-old child. Here's the forwards. You run it back as you hear the gibberish, followed by a clear hello. You hear that jump out of the gibberish there? Do it again. That's a four months of age. Uh, here is an example of, I think this is uh, 12 months of age. Might have been younger than 12 months. And backwards, please daddy help. Please daddy help. Please daddy help. You hear that there? Please daddy help. So part of my theory is that language begins backwards before it does forwards. Children are first speaking in reverse before forward speech commences. The unconscious mind is developing before the conscious mind does. These are radical theories I'm presenting here. I mean, these are radical theories that really challenges linguistics and everything we've known about the psyche. Um, as we get deeper into this, and you'll see where we start talking about spiritual matters, it's one of the, uh, it's, it's one of the uh, most convincing proofs we have yet of the existence of an unconscious mind, or that spiritual dimension. And we're going to get into that as we go on. Here's a, here's a wonderful reversal I absolutely love. This is my daughter in a bathtub trying to pick up a cup and she reaches out to me for help. <coughs> Backwards, she says, David, which is my name, David, help me. You hear that example there? Isn't that cute? I love that one. That's probably one of my most favourite reversals of all time. David, help me. Here it is again. David, help. That's backwards, folks. Uh, who would have thought, hey? All this stuff backwards. Here we have, uh, oh, here we have a uh, mirror image reversal. Uh, this is, uh, here's the forward. Hold on, say it again. Hi, Baba. Oops, I'm sorry. Backwards. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll play it again. Daddy? You had scatty? And what else did you have? And a carrot. And carrots. And milk. And milk? Oh, then you had a nap? Yep. Yeah. Were you a good rester? Uh, yes. Yeah? Say, I love you, Mama. I love you, Mama. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, where he says, I love you, Mama, listen to the uh, forwards on this. Say, I love you, Mama. I love you, Mama. Backwards, he says the same thing. I love you, Mama. I love you, Mama. Come. I love you, Mama. Come. And here it is, forwards and backwards. Here's the uh, forwards. I love you, Mama. And backwards. I love you, Mama. Forwards. I love you, Mama. And backwards. I love you, Mama. We call them mirror image reversals. They're amazing. They're incredible stuff. I mean, how can the how can the brain do that? Create speech that says the same thing forwards as it is backwards. We have uh, so many examples of mirror image reversals. Here, let me play you a let me play you one of the uh, one of my classic mirror image reversals. This is uh, this is from a house fire that I had. Um, this is when I was uh, fairly big on American radio and we were getting a lot of threats and we had a, uh, someone told us to make sure we're home the next day because they're going to deliver us a message. And then my secretary runs in the office and says, David, the house is on fire. I'm in session with a client. Yes? What? And when she says the house is on fire, backwards, she says the same thing, or almost the same thing. The house is on fire, our house is on fire. Here's backwards. Here it is, forwards. Here's the forwards. What? And here 
is the backwards. Amazing, hey? Exactly the same, forwards and backwards. We call them mirror image reversals. I've got doors, hundreds of examples of mirror image reversals. The, uh, don't know what the skeptic's going to do with that one. Here we have uh, another one of my favourite examples on children. This is an eight year old girl who's telling us the subject she's good at, and she's about to tell us the subject she's not good at, but she changes her mind in mid sentence. So here's the forwards. I'm, I'm quite good, good and I'm, I'm quite good at maths and English, but I'm not, and I'm, I'm science. Now notice where she says, but I'm not. English, but I'm not. And then she changes her mind and says science. And I'm, Oops, sorry, I lost it, I'll do it again. And I'm, I'm science, but I don't think, I don't know anything out. And when she has a slip of the tongue, she says this backwards. I'm not telling. I'm not telling. I'm not telling. You all hear that? I'm not telling. No way she's going to tell us a subject she's not good at. Now, what are the odds of that happening by pure chance in a tape like this? What are the odds of them happening every 15 or 20 seconds? What are the odds of them having direct connection with the forward dialogue? This is another form of human communication. This is the most amazing discovery, and uh, I must admit I feel a whole high, high level of frustration after 35 years of uh, travelling and lecturing and teaching that it's still not accepted more than what it is. And, um, here we are. This is a great one that shows the applications of reverse speech. This is, uh, this is a 13-year-old child who was uh, uh, non-verbal, a uh, uh, 13 year old child, and uh, she's handicapped, and she hasn't talked since birth. This is what her talk conversation is. <laughs> and her mother sent me a tape of her daughter talking, and this is what I found in reverse. Mummy, love you. You hear that there? I'll uh, play it again. Well, the mother had tears in her eyes. First time she'd heard a child talk, you know, and uh, she says, love you. I've done work with Alzheimer's patients and we're getting really clear reversals in mumbles in forward speech. I, um, uh, gave a lecture to an old to uh, to aged care facility a few years ago, and they uh, sent me tapes of their patients. And um, yeah, amazingly, I'm um, I'm in pain. Was here. Let me see if I can pull them up real quick. This can be applied in just so many different areas. I mean, it's just really limited by your imagination. I mean, what areas in any area where human speech is recorded and extra information is needed? Uh, can uh, reverse speech can reveal information uh, directly from the unconscious mind and uh, the applications of that is really quite profound. Here we have um, some of the Alzheimer's patients. Here's one of them. And here she says stupid pain. You hear that there? So we can tell from this that this patient is in pain. Okay? And uh, what else have I got here? Oh, here's one here. Listen to this. That's where it went, darling. Yeah. After she says, your bad pill. Yeah. Your bad pill. Yeah. So she's getting the right applications, okay? And uh, the reversals, tapping into her deeper self, is able to communicate that information. Um, uh, just, just, just stunningly amazing applications of reverse speech. Um, I'm going to briefly uh, look at. Uh, oh, look, I've got one here. I don't know if this is right out of context, but it's right in here. Some people get upset because I play all positive reversals on Trump. Trump's pretty good in reverse. He shapes up pretty, pretty well. But here's one where he's incongruent. He's talking about the wall, and Mexico playing for, paying for the wall. 
What's the difference? I want to get the wall started. I don't want to wait a year and a half until I make my deal with Mexico. So then we probably will have a deal sooner than that. And by the way, Mexico has been so nice. And he says they will not deal with us. Uh, we'll mark for you with us. Uh, we'll mark for you with us. An incongruent reverse on Trump. Not deal with us. They will, so you can't expect Mexico to pay for the war. All right, we're going to look at some of the applications in law enforcement, and then we're going to move on to collective unconscious, unconscious mind. But what I'm presenting first off is this other form of human communication: languages by level, forwards and backwards. If you can get, if you can grasp that and get your head around that, then we can start to talk about what is speaking. What does this really mean? What are the implications of this? Okay, let's look at the law enforcement. Here is, uh, uh, if you can cast your minds back to 1996, anyone can remember that? Patsy Ramsey, the little beauty queen murdered in Boulder, Colorado. Here is a parent saying, the mum saying there's at least two people out there who knows who committed this crime. We feel like there are at least two people on the face of this earth that know who did this? And that is the killer and someone that that person may have confided in. That was she tells us who that person is. In other words, who the killer is. Okay? Listen very carefully what she's saying. Why did that person? Why did that person? Why did that person? For those who missed it, she says, I'm that person. Why did that person? Okay, got that? Very clear reversal. Okay, here we have um, here we have uh, murderer Scott Peterson sitting on death row for the murder of his wife, and here he is uh, being interviewed on TV before the trial. And Parada says, "Ask him, did you murder your wife?" Did you murder your wife? No, no, I did not. Says, no, no, I did not. But back as he says, neck, I hit hard. Neck, I hit hard. Neck, I hit hard. When they found her body, she was decapitated. So he's flashing back to remember the crime scene and he hit her hard on the back of the neck. Okay? So while he's denying it forwards, his reverse is telling us the truth. The application that this has in law enforcement is just stunning. It's stunning. Um, once again, I'm puzzled why the law enforcement isn't beating down my doors to start using reverse speech and getting trained in reverse speech. Just... Okay, I use reverse speech myself in, um, in my therapeutic practice. I have designed a whole therapeutic technique around reverse speech. Um, I have a very busy pra practice. Um, which is uh, I can work anywhere in the world, which is absolutely marvellous. Even though I live in Australia, I'm still seeing my clients in America. Just need an internet connection. So there you go. So, but reverse speech will give us a very detailed look as to what is going on inside the unconscious mind of a person. It can tell us why they've got the issues they've got, and in many cases, how to fix them. For example, here is a woman who's got money problems, and she's talking about her money issues. She and I need to work this issue out, but I, it started to bring up all my money fears and stuff. And the thing is, is I, if I know I start sourcing fear again, I'm going to go way down to hell. Back when she says, work on my grief. Work on my grief. Work on my grief. Work on my grief. So that's her unconscious telling us that her money issues have got to do with grief. In order to solve her money problems, we have to work with her grief. Now, using a regular therapy, that might have taken months to get down to that. I can find that in one tape recording. What the problem is, <coughs> excuse me, and in um, some cases, how to actually fix it. Actually, in many cases, how to fix it. Okay, so that's a classic example, work on my grief. Uh, here we have a woman who's suffering from depression. Here we go. I started doing something about my life, about the situations that I found myself in. And here she says, need more sunlight. Need more sunlight. Need more sunlight. Need more sunlight. 
And so she went and took down the curtains from her house, cut down the trees around her window, let in the sunlight, and her depression um, vanished quite rapidly, very quickly, actually. So the reversals were able to tell us exactly what we need to do. Verse speech has taught me many things about human behaviour and human nature. Um, for a start, a lot of the problems that we have are of our own making. We create them. Okay? Here we have a man who's talking about his relationship with his girlfriend. Where do you see the future of you and Sarah? Oops, sorry. Here we go. says, but I must muck it. 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 So there's a behavioural insistence in there for him to sabotage and destroy the relationship. Okay? Uh, here's another one of a similar nature. Do you like doing it on my own? Although there's another part of me that likes to do it on my own. And here she says, I am wanting new grief. Well, I am wanting new grief. So why would anyone want grief in their life? The fact is, we create these patterns in our life that lay down us from birth onwards, or actually even before birth, but that's another discussion altogether. Um, and uh, we create our world in which we live. If we grew up in an angry, violent situation, we are going to create that same situation in our adult life. And... Um, uh, most of the situations we find ourselves in are of our own making. For example, here's another example. I don't right. really surprised where that came from and that I even allowed him to get back into my head like that. I would, I would surely have been shocked if he had done that. There's a woman who's in an abusive relationship. She says, I was shocked. I allowed him to get back into my head. Him to even get back into my head like that. I was, I was shocked. But back what she says, make him abuse me. You hear that then? So a lot of my work, working with my clients, is to unravel these patterns that we have created as we have lived our lives. Patterns that keep us in poverty and depression and, and unfulfilled lives. And uh, a lot of it we create ourselves. Reverse speech tells me that. I see it over and over and over again. Uh, here we have um, here we have a woman who's oh this might be a man hang on let's just play it it's going to okay a woman talking about her financial success it's going to kick off quickly uh, we'll have some months to work out but then after that it's going to really um, uh, really catapult she's talking about a business it's going to really catapult now, this example uses a metaphor, a very simple metaphor. Uh, reverse speech speaks a lot in met metaphors. Um, when we are dealing with the unconscious mind, the majority of communication is in metaphor, using words like wolf, lancelot, goddess, garden of Eden. This uses a metaphor slum, which is a metaphor for poverty. And she says backwards, I go with slum. I go with slum. I go with slum. You hear that there? I go with slum. I go with slum. I am creating poverty. It's an incongruent reversal. So listen to the four. She's talking with great positivity about her business success. It's going to kick off quickly. Uh, we'll have some months to work out, but then after that, it's going to really, um, uh, really catapult. And uh, it's going to really catapult, but the reversal says, I go with slum. I go with slum. I go with slum. So in order for this woman to be successful in her business, this unconscious pattern must first be dealt with. This is one of the reasons why general psychotherapy really, really works, because they can't get down to this unconscious level. They can't get down to the structures and patterns that are creating us. And uh, this is the most amazing discovery for psychotherapy. It's like the x-ray for the unconscious. Uh, 
um, and, and, and uh, um, in uh, some of my latest books I've detailed what I, how I believe the unconscious mind works, what I have learned through human, about human behaviour through reverse speech. Here, here's a classic example of a metaphor. This is on me, and this is talking to a client of mine who'd just suffered a nervous breakdown and was unable to work. So here's the forwards. You were striking as a very enthusiastic guy, I mean, certainly at the time we were being together, you were all full of ideas. Um, is this latest, is this just a your latest idea? Is it just all throth and barble, or do you really want to get out? Do you really, I really want to get Backwards it says, see the wolf fallen in the lake. See the wolf fallen in the lake. See the wolf fallen in the lake. Nice and clear reversal. I'll run the whole lot backwards here in amongst the gibberish. Yeah, that clear that is amongst the gibberish, isn't it? It just jumps out. So what on earth does that mean? See the wolf fall in the lake. What's that got to do with this guy's depression and his business uh, problems? Well, very, very simply, uh, the wolf is a very common metaphor in reverse speech. It reverse, refers to drive, motivation, stamina. A lake is a metaphor for emotions. Water is, is emotions. So to see the wolf fall in the lake, my drive and my motivation is drowning in a sea of emotions. He's describing in metaphor what's happening at the unconscious level. So the question is, how do we fix this? If reverse speech can diagnose a problem, then what do we do to work with it and what do we do to fix it? Well, I've developed a uh, therapeutic technique that I call metaphor restructuring. And the basic premise is that the unconscious thinks in pictures or metaphor. And in order to change the unconscious mind, you've got to change the metaphors that lie in the unconscious. And so what I'll do is I will um, uh, access the unconscious by placing my clients in the light hypnotic state. I'll then ask them to see the metaphors. Um, I'll ask them to see a wolf fallen in lake. And amazingly, the pictures my clients see are very, very clear. The people say to me, oh, I can't visualize, I've tried, it doesn't work for me. No problem having them see the metaphors. Why? Because it is their own metaphors. It is their own unconscious language. And so, the man whose wolf is drowning in the lake, what I'm going to get him to do is to take the wolf out of the lake. See the wolf? and take the wolf out of the lake. And as we change the metaphor, or to restructure the metaphor, or metaphor restructuring, then we are also changing the pattern inside the deep unconscious mind. Okay, all right. Uh, let me see. All right, reverse speech will tell us many times what we have to do to go ahead with it and to heal. For example, um, oh, hang on. Look, I've, I'm, I've pulled a whole bunch of examples together and they're in no particular order here, so I'm pulling them out as I go. Um, okay, I'm going to play this one here. One of the common metaphors in reverse speech is the metaphor whirlwind. Um, this is uh, probably as common as the metaphor wolf. Uh, wolf occurs probably every tape I do. Whirlwind, I'll find in some measure in every tape. Reverse speech discusses a universal energy field that surrounds a physical planet and that in, surrounds our own body or our own energy field. Reverse speech talks a lot about it and how we are interacting with this energy or whirlwind. It talks about the whirlwind constantly. Now here's a man who is suffering, who's had business problems. As you can gather, I get a lot of clients who are businessmen looking to uh, improve their financial situation. And he's talking, this is after we've done the initial recording, and we've found a metaphor about the devil. And I'm asking him, how do we change this devil? And he starts talking about making some new pamphlets. So here's the thoughts. Uh, there's, there's two things, I don't know how much information I have to put in a pamphlet, and whether to have some information back to send to them. 
there's two ways I could go. It depends what this looks like, whether that's sufficient or whether there's too much for that to be. The bat, as he says, see the whirlwind to shift this devil out. See the whirlwind to shift this devil out. You'll hear that one? So the unconscious mind is telling me what I must do to change this pattern. I've got to have him see a devil and a whirlwind coming along, and the whirlwind grabs the devil and moves him and moves the devil out of his field of vision. And just changing that picture, I have discovered, will change the behaviour. Quite an amazing thing. And uh, here's someone from after the session work. And they were interested in the theory. So I spent about a month or so preparing it for them so that they could understand it. And it was the MS Society of, of Southland. And here he says, healing that wolf. Healing that wolf. Healing that wolf. Healing that wolf. Yeah, so this tells me that the meta walk with this man has worked and has been successful. Um, and um, here we have another one. This is this is a uh, this is a great one. Following the meta walks. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I also enjoyed the scene in the vineyard. <laughs> mm. And here she says, "Living in the earth with joy." Living in the earth with joy. Living in the earth with joy. Living in the earth with joy. No, it tells me that we've had good success. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the coup de grace. We're going to skip a few reversals and I'll go back to them. But I want to go to where I'm headed. All right. One of the most common metaphors in reverse speech is the metaphor of the soul. There is not a tape where, that I do where the word soul does not appear in reverse speech. Reverse speech talks constantly about the soul, about God, about our divine nature. It is a very, very common theme in reverse speech. Which leads me on to what is actually reverse speech? What is speaking backwards? And here we have me on a radio show talking about the spiritual aspects of reverse speech. But sometimes people ask you that reverse speech endorse any particular religion and the answer to that is no, there are no deities or religions that reverse speech endorses or says this is right or this is wrong. It, it just talks about the soul and the inwardness of life. And uh, that in itself is, is very powerful. It is. Backwards it says, it's the voice in heaven. Yes, it's the voice of heaven. 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 Heaven resides deep within. Reverse speech says the kingdom of heaven resides inside. Inside, Reverse speech is coming from that spiritual center. It is the voice of the spirit. Um, it is, it, oh boy, gee whiz. I, uh, I, the, the, the applications, the implications of being able to connect to the spirit and discover your divine nature in your connection with God is absolutely stunning to me. Here we have a here we have a uh, reverse speech analyst who's talking to his tape recorder, looking for where is reverse speech coming from, and he's saying, "Oh, is it God speaking?" Is there the voice of God among you, or are you servants of divinity, servants of God, or? Is there the voice of God? Okay, and backwards, we have a long reversal. It says, God was in the verse. Reverse speech describes itself as a sacred verse. He's the living force in the verse. We are Earl. And Earl is a metaphor for great and grand. The human race is great and grand. And God is in the verse. God's voice can be heard in reverse speech. He's the living energy, the living power behind this spiritual language of reverse speech. So listen to this. God has the verse. He has enacted the last verse. We are our And I'll do it again. God was in the verse. God has the verse. He has enacted the last verse. We are our And reverse speech comes back and time and time and time again tells us the same thing. 
It is coming from that deep spiritual part inside of us. It is the voice of God that is speaking. And here's me saying, uh, here's me at a lecture in Sydney in 1988, right at the very beginning of my career, 30 years ago. And I'm saying, I've been suddenly thrust into this role where I have people come to me and say, David, David, I want to know what's going on inside my head. And I see, bloody hell, you're asking me, all I do is play takes backwards. Listen to this. I've been suddenly thrust into this role where I have people coming to me and saying, David, I want to know what's going on inside my head. And I think, bloody hell, you're asking me, all I do is play takes backwards. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and I'm starting to get and where I say all I do is play taste backwards, backwards I say, let's look at that, all I am inside. Let's look at that, all I am inside. And again. Let's look at that, all I am inside. And reverse speech is tapping into all that we are inside. Conscious, subconscious, unconscious, and spirit itself. Um, it will tap into the deepest secrets and deepest mysteries that we're all looking for. Here, here we have a client who's embarking on a round of session work. And this is her second round of work that she's done with me. So here's the forwards. I'm embarking on a round, is that right? Yes? Is that okay? Yeah, okay. All right. So basically, I just wanted to, to put down what has happened since we, I think it was probably two years ago, is it? That I did the last round. Um, yeah, about two years ago, and uh... She's talking about a round of session work. I, I have a, a, a process I take clients on. It's eight sessions, one session a week, over a period of two months. Anyway, she's barking upon the round. The back she says, my soul develop. My soul develop. My soul develop. My soul develop. And so by embarking in the rounds of session work, she is going to develop and work on her soul. Okay? And uh, let's have a look at another soul reversal. Um, uh, oh, we, we, we heard about uh, It's the Voice in Heaven. Here's another one that talks about heaven and the soul. You know how the role of passing it on to your kids from what you have learned that you bring them up the best you can, but you've passed traits on to them and that's what it was. Right, well that's traditional. So, go ahead. I was just going to say, you can't always like... And this verse says, our soul looks down in heaven. Verse 3 tells us so much about the soul and who we are and that spiritual dimension. And uh, um, I'm trying to think of a way I can communicate this it's, to me, this is such a significant discovery to, 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 to be able to look into the mind, look into the soul, tap into our spiritual selves. Um, it's, it's such an amazing discovery. Um, yeah, here's, uh, here's another client talking about session work. I was secure in, in knowing where my place in the world was and, and what the universe, what was out there. And back was he says, the soul whirlwind. Oops, where'd it go? Hang on, I lost it. So he's secure in the place, if his place in the world, because he's connected to the energy and power of the soul, the soul whirlwind. Um, I got myself into a lot of trouble a few years ago. Um, I got into a uh, nasty lawsuit in America, which uh, cost me my career in the United States. And um, I went back to home to Australia uh, quite depressed and broken. And not long after I got home, my son died. And I was in a very bad state. And here's me in one of my uh, training classes trying to work out why I'm feeling so depressed and why I'm in such a bad state. And in this section I'm saying, well, I'm very sensitive to energy. I'm ultra-sensitive to energy. Could be. Yeah, it could be. Well, I said, I'm very sensitive to energy. You know, ultra-sensitive to energy. Uh, and backwards, I want you to listen to the emotion in my voice. I say, my soul gives the pain. I just hope you have good pain. 
You hear the emotion in that? I'm hurting down the level of my soul itself. It's my soul crying for relief. And I merely put myself into session work, and after the session work, I found this. I'm working out all my soul stuff, and backwards I say, the soul well. And there you go. So I've managed to work out my soul stuff. Does this seem interesting to you, the spiritual aspect of reverse speech? I really don't talk about this much publicly. I uh, get, to, get to it into my training classes. But um, um, yeah, here's, uh, here's another client following the round of session work. With the, the feedback from the reversals that I've done, that it's, it's, for me it's not hard anymore. Mm. It's really lovely. This one says, spirit and the goddess will serve her. So she's talking about following the session work and spirit, well, and the goddess. Goddess is a common metaphor in reverse speech. It's hope for the future, dreams, passion. She is going to be served and nurtured by her spirit with hope and dreams for the future. Here, here's a, here's a. A uh, here's a Clyde Ralph talking about uh, Munro Institute. I'm not sure what happened when you, you found Oh, hang on, let me get some more levels on that. <coughs> and, okay, here we go. I'm not sure what happened when you, you found out, you know, I've had out of body experiences at Munro Institute at the very few He um. says, I'm not too sure what happens when you pass, okay? And backwards he says, now be friend with delicious whirlwind. So what happens when you pass? You pass into the whirlwind, into the energy force. Here, here's an, the soul. Another one about the soul. I've got to follow up my way, and I'm still not sure what my way is yet, by the way. And he says, soul, I'll live forever. I'll live forever. Mm, that's not very clear. It's, yeah, it's not the clearest reversal in the world. Talks about the endlessness of life. All right. Reverse speech taps into what is called the collective unconscious. It's that universal storehouse of knowledge that exists outside of time and space that resides deep inside of all of us. And many times it can foretell future events. Um, for example, here is uh, President John F. Kennedy, JFK, in his inaugural address when it says this is in 1961 after he was inaugurated. The small undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed and to which we are committed today at home and around the world. And backwards he says, head is hitting the car. Head is hitting the car. Head is hitting the car. You hear that there? Head is hitting the car. He's flashing into his future. He's seeing what his fate is, where he's headed. His head is hitting the car. And that scene, of course, of JFK being shot in the car is uh, etched in everyone's brain. Um, <clears throat> here we have reversal I found on a client of mine in um, um, uh, uh, June, I think it was June, July 2001. He's talking about uh, tapping into psychic abilities as a conversation. Says soon plan evil on America. And again. So I heard that reverse. I thought, what on earth does that mean? I've no idea. But I kept it, and three months later, what happened? The plane threw into the flew into the Twin Towers. So he was tapping into a collective unconscious awareness of this future event that was about to hit America. 
here's a uh, reversal on me um, that uh, really showed me uh, how reverse speech can tell the future. This is uh, me on a radio show in London, okay? This was uh, last year. It's the most powerful way, because you can hear it in straightforward everyday English. But uh, again, we are hard white to tell the truth. I'm talking about reverse speech. I'm saying, yeah, we are hard white to tell the truth. And backwards I say, on the highway, no, on a highway, there's a chill here. On a highway, there's a chill here. On a highway, there's a chill here. Anyway, one of my analysts analysed this interview and sent me this reversal. I said, what does this mean? I said, I've got no idea. I have no idea what that means. Anyway, two weeks later, I'm in Portland and I'm flying to Redmond in the southern Oregon to uh, meet, meet up with a friend of mine. So I'm, um, so I'm on the plane, and we leave Portland, we fly to Redmond, the plane can't land in Redmond, it's snowed in, so it turned around to come back to the airport. So what do I do? I go and hire a four-wheel drive, and I drive to Redmond. <laughs> anyway, about an hour into the drive, the snow starts coming, and it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Before I know too long, I'm driving this raging blizzard down to five miles an hour, driving on the wrong side of the bloody road and uh, <laughs> in this cold weather. So literally, that reversal came true. On a highway, there's a chill here. And we'll play that reversal again. On a highway, there's a chill here. On a highway, there's a chill here. On a highway, there's a chill here. So that was two weeks before it actually happened. So it's tapping into an event that was going to happen in my life. Quite amazing stuff. So, uh, so there is a existing inside of all us, all of us, there is a universal collective unconscious that taps into all knowledge and all information. And reverse speech taps into that universal collective unconscious. It's uh, just an incredible thing. And it does that. Um, okay. Oh. Ever wanted to hear your spirit speak to you? Listen to this one. This is a great reversal. This is a, uh, um, a reverse speech analyst who's talking to his tape recorder looking for some advice, financial advice. Does it further for us to put more energy and money and effort? Yeah, this reverse is so clear. I won't have to tell you what this is. Listen very carefully. What's he saying? You're frightened, lean on me. You're frightened, lean on me. For those who missed it, you're frightened, lean on me. Here it is again. You're frightened, lean on me. You're frightened, lean on me. That's his spirit talking to him, saying, I know you're frightened, I know you're upset, just lean on me, trust in me. The spirit is in constant communication with the conscious self. I see it every tape I do. There's this substrate of conversation. You must do this. Go and do this. You feel, um, you know, you're frightened. Lean on me. Trust in me. I will help you. And it's this constant voice that is always speaking, giving us advice and guidance. And uh, it's a voice in heaven. It is... God was in the verse. He's a living force in the verse. Look at that. All I am inside. Reverse speech itself tells us what it is. Here's one of my students talking about the amazing power of reverse speech. I think it's awesome. I think it's, it's in a healing situation, it would be just wonderful to... It's a bit like you cheat. You tell me what's wrong, you tell me how to fix it. How, how easy is that? So. And it is, it's a bit like you cheat. You tell me what's wrong, the verses will tell you what the problem is, and will also tell you how to fix it. And back as she says, the source to give help. Oh, oh, oh sorry, I lost it, lost how it. How easy is that, so? Okay, here it is, the source to give help. Uh, 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 the source to give help. The source to give help. The source to give help. And that's what reverse speech is, it's the source to give help. It taps into all that we are inside. Um, here, we, um, here we have a reverse speech analyst who's uh, starting session work with his client. We'll like to give reversals that are pretty clearly from your, your unconscious mind, subconscious. 
And here he says, souls serve you, make you feel love. 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 Nice, reassuring message, okay? The soul will serve you, make you feel love. Verse speaks talks a lot about love. Love being the force that binds the energy together. For example, here's another one client talking about this. Absolutely. He's talking about bringing his power and his life force into his body. And he's back and he says, see yourself full with love, give me whirlwind. That's the power, the love. Love is the force that binds us all together. Verse 5 talks about it a lot. It talks about love as being that energy that is constantly there, that is always there. Verse 5 talks about how God is constantly serving us and looking after us. For example, here we have one here. We've just got a... Hang on, let me give you a bit more volume on that. Um, okay, here we go. We've just got to try. We've got a seminar that the people have paid us to do in November that we'll go, we're going to complete. Yes. He's talking about a seminar, and back when she says, Divine, I must serve you. Divine, I must serve you. Any serious study of reverse speech is going to leave anyone with the firm conclusion that the spiritual realm of the soul and God really does exist. Reverse speech, it's, it's, it's the most common theme in reverse speech is our spiritual nature, our spiritual essence. I don't know why I've been reluctant to talk about it all these years. I've, already, I've seen it there all the time. Here's a surprising one on uh, Jerry Forwell. I don't, I don't like his theology forwards, but I like his reversal. So, uh, the seven year tribulation must transpire here, the one thousand year reign of Christ, in the which I shall be your boss for a thousand years, Dr. Levin. Uh, the one thousand year is yet to happen on this earth. That's just an assumption, I don't have any word of knowledge on that. But and here he says, the will of God's reign is love. What's happened there? That's, the reversal's messed up. The reversal's messed up. There it is, the will of God's reign is love. Oh, I see, it's not done properly. Oh, I've got to fix that up. Okay. There it is, the will of God's reign is love. God comes in reverse speech under many, many different dif different names. God, Yahweh, Elohim, Yeshua, um, Krishna, Allah. Um, here is uh, Nelson Mandela, the late Nelson Mandela, a staunch Christian, using a very surprising metaphor. Uh, so the and here he says, I love the Lord Krishna forever. So what's he doing calling God Krishna when he's a Christian, eh? God goes by many different different names. There are many different, there are many different paths to God. Verse 6 says that uh, we are all seeking to find that connection with the divine. Um, <clears throat> oh, here we go. Here we have um, another reverse speech analyst. That's what I feel uh, lately myself. Is like, uh, it seems like uh, I. Oh, I'm, this, is, this is Jeff, my right hand man, talking about how he's got called in to do reverse speech. That's what I feel uh, lately myself. Is like, uh, it seems like I, I could really truly believe that in reverse speech I'm doing what God wants me to do. I mean, 
and I was chosen for this. I didn't have a choice. It wasn't like. So that's Jeff, my right hand man. He's been with me for 20 years now. And the back, he says, the sheep server make God feel good. First, he says that we are here to serve the sheep. That we are the shepherds here to serve and nurture everyone else. And as we are serving each other, we make God feel good. The sheep server make God feel good. The sheep server make God feel good. The sheep server make God feel good. And again. The sheep make God feel good. So there we go. All right. Let me see. What have I missed out here? How are we going? Any questions? We, are we doing all right here? Yeah, you're all being very quiet. Yes. So, uh, a couple of questions. So, like, the politics and the other speakers are written, right? I'm having trouble hearing you, sorry. Right. So, the, the politicians and their speakers are written. Right. Right. Uh, so, I guess when you have someone speaking something that's written for them, or, you know, like Scott Peterson, he said, uh, Right. If someone else says the same thing, you're not going to get the same reverse. It's to do with the. It's not to do with the words. It's the sounds of the words. So two people can say the same set thing. You're going to get completely different reversals because it's different voice intonations, different tonalities. So uh, uh, the fact that the speech is written for them, it's not the speech writer's thoughts coming out. It is the reader of the speech as he speaks it. It's his own intonation that creates it. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? How are we going? You're doing very well, I gather. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm about, uh, ah. Uh, We've looked at three other lang languages so far, French, German, and Spanish. Uh, we're founded in each one of those languages. Um, if someone is bilingual, you can get reversals in both languages. Um, uh, we've even found reversals that start off in one language and halfway through the sentence switch to another language. So, uh, but it's generally the language that you're thinking in at the time of speaking. Um, you can get reversals on... Um, uh, you can get reversals uh, in one, even though someone is speaking in one language forwards, uh, you'll get a different language backwards. For example, here we have uh, someone who's speaking in Chinese. Uh, it's the translator. Backwards, she says, Nasty Hope was NATO, yes. Nasty Hope was NATO, yes. Nasty Hope was NATO, yes. So, well, that's the translator at the UN, I think. So, uh, so uh, 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 an Asian language forwards and English backwards. So, uh, um, yeah, so you can you can get it in both languages. Um, okay. I want to. Uh, oh, here's a great reverse. I love this one. Uh, yeah. And then it's like, oh, you want to write women's stories or kids' stories? This one says, hear oats speak the hidden. 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 Yes, that's what I'm doing, isn't it? Speaking the hidden, talking what lies inside. Look, I'm still only scratching the surface of what reverse speech is. It, it, it's just a... Oh, okay. Yes. 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 I've seen that many times. Yes. Yes. Where it would diagnose a physical disease. Um, uh, is that the question you're, you're asking me? Yeah. Okay. Here's, here's, a, here's a lady. You, you're asking about the warnings of physical disease? Warning of people. Warnings of Right. Here's a woman who's suffered from depression. Which I depressed my and after the depression. Which makes me think you know 
the back, but she says, warning, it must be getting cancer. You hear that there? That's her body warning her that cancer is in the system and she needs to do something about it. Now here's someone who suffered from asthma. Um, and she smelled, talk about mold smell, she smelled in the house. He's left it in there. I have the stuffed towels under the uh, door to keep the mold smells from coming out. Back, she says, under the floor, pus in my head. Well, as a result of that reversal, the husband went and looked under the floorboard to the house and found 18 inches of mold growing under the house. So the reversal was able to pinpoint the source of this woman's asthma, okay? She cleaned out the mold and the asthma disappeared. So, see, the human body, or the human mind, knows all of, knows us very, very well. I mean, we're only in contact with 5% of the mind, if, if that. 95% of it is speaking unconsciously. And this is the, uh, the part the reverse speech taps into, that 95% of consciousness that we aren't, that we aren't aware of. And it knows, it, it, knows, it knows what's wrong with us, it knows how to fix it, it knows about our spiritual self, our relationship with God, it knows about our relationship with others, it taps into the collective unconscious, it's just an incredible technology. Here, here, this is some of the implications of reverse peace, listen to this. What uh, other metaphor would be the optimum metaphor that we could put out into the world that would uh, attract uh, people's interest and enthusiasm and would attract the right kind of people to the process and to uh, our mission and to the work that we do. And when he says enter the work that we do, he says backwards, we deal with revolution. We deal with revolution. We deal with revolution. And that's ultimately the, the implications of reverse speech. It will be a revolution in our study of human understanding and psychology and spirituality. I used to think it was going to happen in my lifetime. I'm 62 now, so I'm starting to have less hope that it might happen in my lifetime. It may do, it may not. But I'm certainly laying the ground and work to get, to get it out there. Look, this can change your life. Um, it, it, it can let you see who you really are. It can solve your problems. It can, it can, it can tell you about your relationship with God and Spirit. Um, I see entire lives turned around as a result of reverse speech. Um, here's a couple of uh, here's a couple of endorsements I want to play. Let me, uh, uh, where are we? Here we have uh, one of them. Here's the first one. I first met David Oates a few years ago when I was invited to an exclusive event about the unconscious mind. And his work, the work of reverse speech technology, blew me away. And without doubt, I knew I had to work with him. What have I gained from working with David Oates? Wow. Um, it's completely changed my life. Uh, I wanted at the time to have more money, like 90% of people who work with David. And Thanks to working with the reverse speech process, I attracted to me the most amazing opportunity. It's a, a young British business called Tropic Skin Care. And it came to me literally one month after it launched in the UK. So I got in at the best time ever. It's joyful, it's easy, it's effortless, and my monthly income has been doubling year on year. And it, it, well, it's forecast to continue doing so. So financially, I'm attracting more and more opportunities that RST totally work. I've also had it work with other friends. So for example, I had a friend who was out of contact with her children for many years, and after working with David, her children got back in contact. It's like a miracle. And another friend who wanted to attract a partner, she worked with David, bingo, she was proposed to. She attracted a man who proposed to her. So if you want something in your life, then I strongly recommend that you work with David because David will align your unconscious mind to your conscious desires and that's all that you need to live the life you want to live.
And that's a uh, very successful client of mine who's uh, manifested an amazing business opportunity as a result of the reverse speech I did with her. I have a great success in physical disease. Here, here has a woman who had eczema. The work that I've been doing with you has relieved my eczema by create changes in lifelong problems, difficult problems that no other therapy has been able to touch. Reverse speech has been able to touch that and shift it and order it. Um, I'm going to start to move a lot more into the spiritual now. I'm writing my next book. It's called The Still Small Voice Within. And it's all about the spiritual aspects of reverse speech, what God teaches about, what reverse speech teaches us about God and the soul and our destiny. Uh, the collective unconscious. So I've just started writing this book. Up the back there I've got five of my other books up up there. Um, so you know you're welcome to get some of them. It'll tell you all about reverse speech and the amazing things that it can offer and do for you. Um, let me see what else I've got here that I haven't played. Uh, I think that'll probably do. Yeah. Uh, how are we going so far? Any other questions? No, okay. Yes? You have to stand up, sorry. It's, it's about traveling on the whirlwind. Oh, yes. And if any research around that, or I mean, I've got to be a long time ago in experiments. Yeah, well, I use a whirlwind significantly, particularly when I do my shear wolf trusses, you know. Well, clues on that? Using the whirlwind for remote viewing? Hey? Don't know. Don't know. Anyway, folks, that is perverse speech. It's another form of human communication. Language is bi-level, forwards as well as backwards. That's the, uh, that's the uh, theoretical side of it. But what it teaches us is it taps into the totality of consciousness. Our conscious thoughts, our subconscious thoughts, our unconscious thoughts, and down to the spirit and the soul itself. Um, it is all part of our psyche. We are a spiritual being. That's what reverse speech has taught me. And um, um, we are all seeking to be connected to that divinity, that divine power. And the reverse speech shows us the way, how to, how to get there. I really believe that. And uh, I think it's an amazing discovery. It really will be revolutionary. Is the world ready for it? I don't know. I've been traveling the world for 35 years and uh, um, have had a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, ups and downs along the way. There was a... I, uh, well, we'll finish off with a bit of a, a b b bit of a different tone. This is uh, this is uh, Art Bell predicting the future of her speech. I tell you, with any power, David, it may almost be too much power. Uh, I, I have questions about that and whether the world is really ready for that kind of absolute truth. You know, and I, and I wonder if reverse speech is going to end up in a fistfight. It probably is. <laughs> it did too. It ended up in a fist fight in America. Yes. Oh, I actually, that's part of my homework assignment to students. They've got to find a lost title. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I remember once I lost my car keys. And I talked to my tape player, where's my keys? And it said, it's under the phone. Lift up the phone, and there they were. Under, uh, there they were, right under the phone. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it can be used for that. Yeah, yeah. Amazing discovery. No. Okay, I'm, I'm done. Yes. So you can 
absolutely correct. A lot of my students and analysts use it for that very reason. Uh, Ralph does it for that reason. Um, yeah, you talk in the tape recorder. We've just released an iPhone, uh, the latest iPhone app, and uh, we've got one for Android coming out in a couple of months. And um, after that, we're going to work on voice recognition, and then we're really into mind reading to um, have a have an app that will read out, print out what they're saying backwards as they're doing it in real, real time. That's what we're moving towards next, and that's really getting into mind reading. So, very exciting future. Um, I think that um, well, whether it happens, in, it's probably not going to happen in my lifetime, but I'm certainly, uh, certainly, uh, certainly paving the road and, uh, for, for what's to come up. So, uh, you got something to say, Ralph? Oh, yeah, I'll stick around. Yeah, I'll be around. We also have a two meter back here, you guys want to join or your name on them, we'll send you emails from Nixon, yeah? We're talking about the other people, the other also. So, yeah, thank you. No worries, thank you very much. Grab my books, get my books.